All right. During my time of getting things working with Skyrim, sometimes I ran into issues with Wine, where when the program crashed, not all of the processes would would close, and I couldn't find what process was really, you know, holding things back, preventing me from running the application again. Meaning, I had to reboot the computer just to run the software all over again. So I did some digging around and I learned how to kill all the wine processes. So we're going to look at ways to kill rogue wine processes, and then we're going to make a shell script with which to allow you to actually just run a command in the terminal, a simple little command, and kill all wine processes. We're going to do that right now on Spatry's Cup of Lemon. <laughs> when I was working on Skyrim, that program just crashed all the time. Mostly because I had my load order wrong. Who knows? There were any, any number of variables requiring me to reboot the computer. And so I did a Google search online, and I found a few interesting commands that you could use to uh, kill wine processes. Okay, uh, first, let's go ahead and run a few programs in wine. Uh, I'll pick a couple here. Um, why don't I run um, my favorite program, Fireworks. I use that all the time. And uh, maybe we'll, since I already have um, an installation of Steam in here, why don't we run that as well? Okay, let's minimize some of this stuff here. So we have a cleaner workspace. All right, and... Um, my, my favorite image editor, Macromedia Fireworks 8, before Adobe bought it and ruined it. Um, I, do, I do all of the graphics for my show with the software. And, of course, I have Steam uh, running here silently in the upper right corner of the screen. And if you want to know how to run Steam silently, that's covered in my Skyrim video. You might want to check that out. Okay, so let's say... Um, the fireworks had crashed, or something had crashed, it doesn't matter. And uh, here is a command I looked up for killing wine. Alright, so let's go ahead and run this wine server k. Alright, the program ran just fine, but guess what? I've still got programs running in wine right now. Steam is still running strong as ever. If I click store here, this program is working. So the wine server dash K really didn't have much of an effect for me. So, hmm, we need something a little bit more powerful because, you know, if, if, if programs, you know, go haywire on you, you really don't want to have to reboot your computer, especially if you're debugging a program, uh, you know, a Windows program in Wine. You don't want to have to reboot your computer every time. You know, you just want to kill everything inside Wine. So uh, I did some further digging on uh, com command line foo. And then here is another one. Two, actually. I read both of these, and I figured, hmm, which one of these two makes the most sense to you? So let's take a look at the command. Basically, what it's doing is this command is basically searching for all exe files, and it's giving a command to kill them. All right, but what about DLLs and everything else that could be running in the background? So we look at this one here, and this one makes a little bit more sense because the second command we have a wine server dash k. It's running kill all nine. Okay, and that's literally gonna just give it a punch. It's gonna power everything off in the wine server for i and ps. Uh, it's searching out all executable files, and then it's also gonna tell us what it is killed, when it is kill it. 
I like this command. It was a little bit more sane. Let's go ahead and copy this command. All right, and let's go ahead and paste this into the terminal. All right, now you'll notice we still have the icons for fireworks and steam open. When I press enter, watch this. It killed everything in wine. Wow. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted. So how can we use a command like this so that we can just call it up whenever we want to and be able to uh, use this at any time without having to type such a long command? Very simple. Let's go ahead and press cancel on this here. It popped up an error window for every program that it had to forcibly close. All right, and let's open up our handy little text editor. You can use any text editor you want here. All right, and uh, it looks, huh, looks like I did my homework. It's already in here, but um, let's go ahead and just make a new one. Okay, and uh, one of the greatest features in Linux is your ability to be able to make anything and literally anything in Linux can be made executable. Some may argue you can do the same thing in Windows with batch files as well by putting in a, a string of DOS commands and that sort of thing. But uh, literally in Linux you can make anything executable rather than specifically having to take a text file and name it .bat. You could have anything executable in here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do a pound exclamation point, slash bin, slash bash. All right, and then let's go ahead and paste that command in. We're going to use this. I know it works great. So let's go ahead and uh, file save as. Um, let's go ahead and uh, put this in. It's battery downloads. Okay, and let's go ahead and name this uh, wine killer. All right, dot sh. So we're going to call it wine, capital W for wine. And, yeah, whatever. Call it whatever you want. Winekiller dot sh. We're going to save that file now. And uh, then we need to make this executable. There are a few ways you can achieve this. All right. For instance, one way you could do it is go to your downloads folder and in your file manager, you can just right click on a file, select properties, go to permissions, and under execute or some derivative thereof, uh, you can say only the owner, only the owner in the group or anyone can execute it. Okay? That's one way. So you could select anyone. Now the file is executable. I'm going to press cancel here. Or you can do it in the terminal. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up our trusty terminal here. All right, we're going to change directory to downloads. Okay, and then we're going to issue the command chmod dash x, and then that's winekiller.sh. Of course, make sure that you um, mind your spelling, what you named that. All right, and now this file is executable. Okay, so, well, let's put that to the test here. We've got, um, we've got um, Play on Linux running here. Let me close this. I didn't mean to open up another instance of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, run another program again. We'll run Fireworks again. And then we'll put this to the test and see what happens. All right, let's move this over here. All right, let's go ahead and just right-click on this file or double-click it. It looks like it wants to open. Let's right-click and select Open. All right, it isn't giving us an option here to run it. So why don't we just go ahead into the terminal while we're here in downloads and just go sh wine killer dot sh. Boom, it worked. It killed the process. Zip, bada, boom, done. 
Well, how can we make this a command that we just run in the terminal whenever we need it? Um, especially, many of you guys are probably using drop-down terminals now. It's convenient if a program crashes or if you're running a program in full screen. I have a simple little keyboard switch that I hit here that drops down my terminal, and it doesn't matter what I'm running. This terminal will drop down and let me go ahead and issue commands into it. So how do we go ahead and do this uh, so that we have a command? Well, I had a video I put up a while back ago where I showed you some little tricks about aliases. Why don't we re-review that? All right, so basically taking your simple little text editor here, we're going to go File and then Open File. We're going to go into our home directory here. All right, and then we're going to type in bash dot B-A-S-H-R-C, okay? This is what we're going to open. It's a hidden file, dot B-A-S-H-R-C. Let's open that. Okay, and then under aliases here, you're going to see I have a number of things in here. We have alias K wine, and the command is in quotation marks. Uh, and that is uh, sh slash home slash factory documents. I have a zero documents folder. And then I have a file called uh, killwine.sh right here. So this alias kwine, that's all I have to do is open up my terminal and just type in kwine. Okay, let's try that and see how that works. We'll go ahead and close this file. But if you did add a line to your aliases section, you'd want to save that. Okay, so let's try that then. Let's uh, go ahead and open up um, Fireworks again. I'm sorry, I hate to pick on Fireworks, but you know, Fireworks is still my favorite image editor. And I realize it's older software, but I'll tell you what, this program is still magnificent. You know, and it won't even run on modern versions of Windows. Why should I have to go out and buy new software when I upgrade my operating system? It's insane when my old software does the trick, you know? It, drives, it can drive you crazy sometimes. So, all right, we've got fireworks open again, but let's say the program crashed, it went rogue on me, whatever. So we can just issue K-W-I-N-E, quine. Enter, boom, kills everything, uh, killed wine, it ran that whole string, and zip, bada, boom. Gotta love it. And the possibilities are endless with shell scripts. You can have um, you know, I used to have a shell script uh, for doing my screen capturing, and then I switched to Simple Screen Recorder, which is what I'm using now. But, I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can have, sh you can have shell scripts for running anything uh, on your system, and then just uh, have a simple little command that you just type in the terminal, and boom, it'll take care of it. For instance, I run VMware. On my computer, and uh, every time VMware patch updates, I update that from the AUR. I need to run it, and I just have a simple command that I can type into the terminal VM, enter, and then boom, it runs VMware patch for me after inserting my password. How cool is that? Any any tasks you really don't want to have to type a long command for, you can make a simple little shell script, and boom, just you know, run what you got to run there. Well, I hope that helps some of you out. Some of you seasoned veterans probably know some better ways, and you're welcome to share them in the space below uh, to help the uh, newcomers. But um, that's all I have on this today. Uh, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do next, but I'm sure I'll uh, dream up something. So we'll be seeing you guys pretty soon. Peace out. Mm -hmm.